You are familiar with the famous Matterhorn in Zermatt, but perhaps less familiar with two other mountains that make wonderful excursions, the Klein Matterhorn and the Sunega. We're taking you up both of those peaks in this episode. First to the Klein Matterhorn in the Matterhorn Glacier Paradise. We're going on a major, major journey to a high mountain peak. We're taking you to the top of the Klein Matterhorn, which has the highest viewing platform in Europe that can be reached by cable car at 3,883 meters high at the top of the Alps. It's called Little Matterhorn because it's next to the more famous Matterhorn Mountain that's even higher, 600 meters higher at 4,478 meters high and we'll get great views of the Matterhorn going up in the cable car. Now well, we're not there yet. We're just changing cable cars one more time. We don't have to walk hardly at all though. It's an easy stroll from one cable car to the next. You'll see hikers with some serious climbing gear ready to scale the peaks, but the average traveler like us needs no equipment, just some warm clothing. Taking three cable cars changing twice on our route to the top, which takes about 45 minutes altogether. On the way down, you could ride down the same way, or in our case, we're going to do some walking, as we'll show you later. There's Trocknersteg, and one more lift to go, and then we make it all the way up to the top. And this last leg is going to take us up over 12,000 feet high. So we're up in that thin oxygen zone, over 12,000 feet. You want to take it easy. But we had no troubles, and everything is very convenient. And here, too, the engineers have been busy at work building tunnels and pathways and snack shops and elevators that take care of us. So it's really no strain at all. Anybody can do this. And then climb up a staircase to the main viewing platform. Here we've got a spectacular panorama of the big high peaks all around us. Many mountains over 12,000 feet high, stretching 360 degrees in a circle around you here watching these skiers go by, and then they're gonna slide down and ride back up that same cable car back to the top of the Klan Matterhorn. And they can ski up and down all day long, and all summer long as well, too. It's the highest summer slopes in the Alps. Traveling in the month of May is just a nice time, a perfect time to be here. It's cool but not cold, and it's not crowded we are going to explore the inside of this glacier. They've actually carved an ice tunnel. It's more than a tunnel, it's a grotto inside the glacier itself. This is just unbelievable. You walk along a comfortable matting and staircase and it's all lit up inside. They've got these different chambers and rooms and corridors and tunnels all linked together. We're able to enjoy a snack on the way down too. Halfway down there's a restaurant. And the cable cars continue on down. There's three stages of cable cars to get back down into Zermatt. But once again, we're not going to ride the cable car all the way down. You could if you want to, but we've chosen to opt out and take a hike. At the end of our three-week tour of Switzerland, several of us looked back on this hike as the favorite moment of the entire tour. And we had a lot of great moments on the tour, as you might have noticed if you've been following all of our Swiss videos. But there was just something lovely and ideal about this beautiful walk downhill through the wildflowers with mountains all around us. Entering this little hamlet of Zmut. And they've got a couple of restaurants here. It's not even a hamlet. This is what they call an Alp. It's just a little cluster of buildings and a couple of restaurants you could stop and have a bite and a few cottages, a few vacation cottages here. Zmut has been an occupied village for over 500 years. It's really quite something. Seems like some of the buildings here are at least a couple centuries old. It makes the perfect pit stop. And the food was really quite delicious. You've got a variety of restaurants and each has its own special menus featuring, of course, traditional cuisine. 
grab a few pictures, and adieu, leaving Zmut behind. Some fellow hikers trying to figure their way with the map. Well, it's pretty simple if you just stay on the path, you just keep heading down. Some people like to hike up. They say better exercise, and also they get a view looking into the mountains that way. Well, either way, you have a nice view. Continuing down, it takes about an hour to hike all the way down to Zermatt. That's not bad. That's an easy hike. Some animals along the way. Here's some frisky dog playing with the Heidi type master. And he wants to play. And along the way, you've got some scattered homes. Patch of sheep just ahead. These mountain meadows are ideal for sheep. They just run loose and chew their way. It's like the country has been mowed down by sheep. Everything is so neat and trimmed in Switzerland and the sheep must have something to do with that. It's like they've been weed eating the whole country. The rest of our small group decided to ride the cable car all the way back down to Zermatt, but they missed out on these sites. We had some nice streams and mountain forest, easy trail coming down. Nicely prepared surface there, no problem. It was a nice vista as we make our way further downhill, heading back to Zermatt. Once again, we've got wildflowers and snow-covered mountain peaks, green hillsides. What a package. As you've noticed, we're using three screens to present the picture to you today. And this is kind of a little experiment to replicate the experience of being there. When you're at a place, you're looking all around, not just at one focus, but on the side, above, below, and that's what we're showing you today. It's a kind of total immersion to give you lots of interesting things to look at. Of course, you could do this hike in reverse. You could start out in Zermatt, but then you're walking uphill and continue up to that cable car and then carry on from there. Or you could do it as a loop hike, as we'll show you in a moment with the map, starting up from Zermatt, up to Zmut, have a break, then maybe have lunch, turn around and walk back down to Zermatt. You're on two different trails, so it makes for nice alternative viewings. The higher trail requires a little more effort, so we're showing you the lower trail in this video on the blue route. And then it levels off as you get down towards the bottom of the hill and then all of a sudden you're back in Zermatt, back in the village. We have a separate movie about Zermatt that shows you how lovely this village is, so be sure to look for that in our collection. For now, we're just taking a quick look at the village, and then we're going up another mountain. We're going to Sonega, and we'll take you on another hike down. We'll go down both sides of Sonega, actually. You could do all of this in one day. If you get an early start, go to the top of Climb Matterhorn, Come down as we've shown you, do that nice walk from Zmut back into Zermatt. Take a break, have lunch perhaps, and then up the Sonega. It's easy to get to the mountain lift. It's in town, although it's not in the center of the village. It's over on the edge, so it might be a 10 minute walk for you, but no problem getting there. And we're going to walk over to the funicular that will take us up to the Sonega a mountain high above Zermatt town. We'll ride a funicular up and then we're going to walk down. Reaching the funicular in a few minutes, we notice out front they have a big map showing the different routes and different locations up on the mountaintop. We'll be riding up this way in the underground funicular and then walking down the mountain. Then at the end of this segment, we'll go back up and hike down on the other side of Sonega showing you the differences in those two routes. You'll find each side is different and equally attractive. Just buy your tickets from the booth here, okay. no reservations necessary. Then you walk through a tunnel for about 80 meters. It's quite a stretch here going into the mountain. Notice it's not crowded because we're here in the month of May, which is kind of the shoulder season. Very nice time to be here, not crowded at all. This funicular goes up through a tunnel in the mountain. You're never above ground. It's like a subway inside the mountain itself. It was opened in 1980. That only took three minutes and now we're out on the terrace. 
The sign shows you that from this one point, there are many different trails that you can take. And there's a restaurant up here, of course, and a bar. You could just have a drink, have a meal, or just skip it as we're going to head right out and do some walking. And so we begin our descent. We figure this will take us about an hour and a half. It actually took about two hours, but it's all downhill and really quite easy and scenic. Right away, there's a little lake called Lysi. In the summertime, people go swimming in this lake but it's a little nippy here in the month of May, so we're just taking a look. And this is one of five lakes up here on the plateau. You could keep walking further uphill and see more of these lakes if you wished, but we are heading in the other direction, so we just stop and have a look down at the lake, beautiful reflections, and turn around and we keep on walking down. You have a choice of direction in walking down from Sonega to Zermatt. You can either go left or you can go right down each side of this ridge. Later in the program, in about five minutes, we'll take you on a walk down that right side so you can compare the two. If you go to the left, that's to the south. It takes, they say, about an hour and 45 minutes. If you go to the right, that's on the north side. They say it takes about two hours. Well, in our case, we went to the left. Actually, if you went to the right, it's a little bit more of a forested trail winding through a slightly steeper hill. And if you go to the left as we did, it's more of a gentle and straight slope and we'll have some forest coming up as you'll see. So you take your pick. This early part of the trail was reached within about 15 minutes and it was so pleasant, quite level. You've got the rocky outcrops, you've got the hillside coming down with the grassy slopes and a few wildflowers slightly above the tree line and we're about to enter into the forest. It's a magnificent forest of larch trees, the typical forest cover of this part of Switzerland. A very hardy and durable wood that's used for construction as well as firewood. Getting into the characteristic zigzag cut of the trail, it's going steeper downhill, but still it's been planned so that the slope is very easy for anybody to cover. You do not have to be in any kind of special physical condition to make this hike. It's really quite easy. It's gonna take you an hour and a half to two hours. It might help if you have a walking stick, especially when you're going downhill. Another trick when you're going downhill is don't try and put on the brakes, just go with gravity, go with the flow, and let the hill carry you down. Some places, of course, get a little steeper, and there's some tricky rocks and dirt underfoot, so you gotta be more careful. Sit up, down, take a break, take a rest. Take it easy, you're enjoying yourself here. You notice we're using some sticks that we found on the trail side to help stabilize ourselves as we walk down. You can always find the odd branch or two so look around and grab one, it's part of the fun, and that will help you get down. Or on the other hand, if you're a more serious hiker, a regular on the trails, you want to have these poles, Nordic walking sticks. Local folks tend to walk uphill, they enjoy the exercise, it's easier to walk downhill. You walk up. With all the beautiful scenery and the lovely trees and the easy walk down, we find that hard, the trail huh? is beginning to level was, off. Uh, it looks like there's light at the end of the tunnel. We've almost arrived at the bottom. From this point, the trail is all quite level, especially compared to what we've just come down from up on the mountain. We are in the suburbs of the little village of Zermatt. There are houses developing. They're sprouting up like wildflowers here. This town is quite small only about 6,000 population, but it's booming. It's growing quite rapidly because of the increase of tourism all the time. People want to come to Zermatt to enjoy these beautiful mountains all around. Notice you can stay in a house rather than in a hotel. There's a large number of these bed and breakfasts and rooms for rent. In the typical Swiss chalet, that might be a nice choice for the visitor. This house looked like it stepped right out of a postcard. It's so perfect with all those flowers and the wooden balconies and benches and planters and a beautiful lawn out front. The rustic chalet wooden architecture. 
There's the Gornagrat train coming down from the mountaintop. We've shown you that in a previous episode. Well, the town is booming. There really is construction everywhere. But don't worry, they're not going to ruin it. Zermatt will always be a village. It'll always have that small town charm. And they're just making it better. They're doing a great job with these modern expansions, more houses, a few more hotels, make more room for the visitors. Finally, we've arrived back in town. We're just a few minutes away from the main streets of the village. But even here you see there's open fields and wildflowers, especially in the month of May. It's the perfect time to visit for wildflowers and access to the trails. As mentioned earlier, we're going to walk down the same mountain again, Sunega, but this time down the other route on the north side of the hill. Start by riding up the underground funicular, taking the trail on the north side of the funicular. The sign shows our routing in the direction of Tuftern. Frequent views that you get of the Matterhorn. Scenery at the upper level is open forest with the grassy hillside between the trees. In about half an hour, you arrive at this tiny hamlet of Tuftern. There are a couple of restaurants and cafes here, so you could actually take a break if you feel like it, sit down, get something to eat. More likely, you're just gonna keep on walking by, but it's a pretty collection of chalet-style buildings just to enjoy as you walk on down the hill. For just a short while, the trail gets wide and gravelly and dusty and not so attractive. It's more of a bicycle trail than anything. But most of the trail ahead is going to be nice and narrow and geared for the hiker. It'll take about one more hour to reach the bottom. And practically throughout that entire walk now, you're going to be enjoying scenery like this with the green hillside and lots of trees. These are primarily the lark trees, the native tree of the area. And it is very clean and green and plenty of fresh air up here. There are several different and interconnecting routes on this hillside. At this point, it's an ideal mountain trail. It's easy and it's just the right angle downhill that it lets you float along without any effort at all. And it winds and turns in these sinuous S curves that are just very pleasant. It's very easy walking. We have an entire movie all about Zermatt Village, so be sure to look for that in our collection. It's a wonderful small town, pedestrians only, shops, restaurants, many hotels, and other mountain excursions available. We'll also take you up the Gornergrat in a separate movie, which is truly a spectacular journey. We have a big series of movies about Switzerland taking you to most of the great places. We'll bring you to Lucerne and up to Mount Titlis, Mount Rigi, over to Interlaken, up to the Jungfrau, we'll see the Schilthorn, Lauterbrunnen Valley, Trummelback Falls, Grindelwald, Bern. Then on to Zermatt, the Matterhorn. Yes, we'll have a look at the Gornergrat, up the Sunega, do some hiking, show you the village. Then on down to Lugano and Locarno in the southern part of Switzerland, the Ticino. We also take you to the great city of Zurich. Look for them in our Swiss collection.